Hey friends, EJ here from the back porch and I am coming to you from the weekend of the Irwin Apple Festival. You'll probably see this video a little later, but we want to highlight a little staple of the region today. Uh, we've done it before, but I'd like to show you some more pieces uh, this week of Blue Ridge Pottery, uh, also known as Irwin Pottery. Uh, this is a worldwide staple uh, that was made right here in the region. Uh, called Blue Ridge Pottery, again made in Irwin, Tennessee. We're celebrating that this weekend. They have a big Blue Ridge Pottery Festival in Irwin, and um, that's this weekend. We've had a lot of our friends that stop by only a couple times a year when that's in, uh, in town, and uh, they come to see our Blue Ridge selection. We do have a few vendors with some very good Blue Ridge Pottery pieces, and they're people, thankfully, uh, we appreciate those who travel from all over to come see our Blue Ridge Pottery. So I thought I'd share a little bit with you about that today and highlight some of our pieces. But a little bit of the background about the history of Blue Ridge Pottery uh, is that it, uh, again, uh, was made in Irwin, Tennessee. It's been around a long time. Um, I don't remember exactly when it started, but it was probably, oh, I uh, should have looked that up, but I'm thinking pre-1950s. Uh, for those of you who are um, Blue Ridge Pottery experts, feel free to drop that actual date in the comments and we would appreciate it. Uh, but I do remember uh, how this was sold worldwide and it became an overnight sensation in the kitchen of many uh, American homes. As a matter of fact, there were displays of Blue Ridge Pottery made in Irwin, Tennessee in the 1960s in New York City in places like uh, Macy's and places like that. A friend of mine was a uh, truck driver, he's since passed away, his name was Bill Monsier, and before he went to work for uh, the Magnavox Corporation in Greenville, he used to uh, drive a truck all the way to California hauling Blue Ridge Pottery in the 1950s. Uh, so that, um, it's been an economic boom for our region uh, until its departure um, much more recently. So a few of the pieces that I'd like to highlight today are some pretty cool pieces. These, uh, these two sets here are uh, chocolate pot sets, if you will, and they're pretty, pretty valuable, actually. They're sought after. They've got a good look to them. This one is the French peasant design, uh, and uh, I can't remember the name of this one, just a floral design. Uh, but uh, the chocolate pot sets all come with this, uh, this chocolate top pitcher and uh, a... Uh, almost a cream and sugar type set there. Uh, and they're painted, of course, with the same um, design. As a matter of fact, just a, a little bit of a, a how-to about how this was made. Uh, the forms were made, they were all each individually hand painted, and then they were glazed over top of that paint, uh, which made them very strong and very durable and uh, lasting. As long as the piece itself doesn't break, the paint will be there from now on because it's under glaze. Very cool piece. These, my friends, are Betsy picture, Betsy pictures, Betsy jugs, if you will. A lot of people really like them. Um, she just looks like she's uh, just in a good little mood, happy little mood, just can't wait to pour you some cream on your cereal or whatever it is that you'd like to use. Uh, there are people out there, collectors, who collect specifically the Betsy jugs. Uh, there are some that are extremely valuable. Each of them are probably at least in the $100 range, but some can actually go up into the several hundred dollar range. And uh, this one is priced at $125. You can see the, the intricate work there uh, on her design. And uh, that's a pretty cool piece. Here's another design of a pitcher. This one is exactly a coffee pot. Uh, when you think about Blue Ridge Pottery, you think more of this design, kind of these uh, dark reds and greens. Oftentimes, if you're not familiar, there were a lot of patterns uh, that were mass produced in that color scheme. And, um, but the uh, coffee pots are, uh, a little more valuable because they're more rare and they present very well. That one's priced at $110. Uh, this is a rare pattern here. Uh, it is called the Charm House, uh, Charm House pattern. And um, this teapot here is extremely rare. You don't see a lot of those. There may be some people out there who collect that specific pattern. It's very pretty. Um, that teapot there is, is priced at 100, or actually $310. Here are the matching salt and pepper shakers. And just very intricately painted, wonderful paint schemes. Uh, that salt and pepper set right there is priced at $100. And lastly is this little trinket box. It's actually called, quote, Dancing Nude Box. Uh, it's priced at $400. You can see the young lady on there. 
Uh, she thankfully is just a, uh, a shadow uh, of a figure instead of being anatomically correct, uh, but in the day it was called the uh, Dancing Nude Box. And uh, again, very intricately painted. Uh, this is a rare piece and it is available here at the Back Porch Antiques. We do, do love local history here at the Back Porch Antiques and we love to tell the stories of those. We love it when our customers come in and inquire about the history of things. We can uh, learn those stories and learn those facts together um, by examining the pieces that we have for sale here. Uh, you have the opportunity to buy those and it doesn't cost you anything to come in and talk about them. So you're welcome anytime. Again, um, Blue Ridge Pottery, uh, a local gym. Uh, we're thankful to highlight it here at the back porch. We'll see you next time.